Morning, morning Gareth. Gareth. Um, it's the morning after the night before, 12 hours later. How, how do you reflect on what's happened on and off the pitch and also on social media over the last uh, 12 hours? Um, <clears throat> well, I, I'm not not totally across everything, but um, um, you know, my first thoughts this morning are, are immediately with the uh, uh, the boys that have done so well for us, and uh, the players have, have had an incredible um, togetherness and spirit, which I think has brought so so many parts of our country together. So. You know they they should be, and I th I think they are incredibly proud of what they've done. Um, for some of them to be abused is unforgivable, really. Um, I know a lot of that has come from abroad. You know the people that track those things have been able to explain that, um, but not all of it. And um, it's just not what we stand for. We we I think have been a a beacon of light in bringing people together, in people being able to relate to the national team and the national team stands for everybody and um, so that togetherness has to continue and we've shown the power our country has when it does come together and has that energy and positivity together. We felt that from the fans and um, I'm incredibly proud of the players and as I said yesterday the the game we we needed to win in the 120 minutes. Um, we were a, a little bit short in that period. Um, then it's my decision who takes the penalties. It's not a case of players not volunteering or you know more experienced players backing out. They didn't have the chance. That was my choice. Nobody else's. Um, my my decision to give the guys that took it the penalties that they took. Still got huge belief in them. Um, so those those boys have done a, a brilliant job, and uh, we we heal together as a team now, and uh, we're there for them. And uh, I know that 99% of the public will be as well, because they will appreciate how well they've played. Bukayo, in particular, has been an absolute star in this tournament. Incredible maturity, the way he's played. Um, has brought a smile to so many people's faces. He's become such a hugely popular member of the group and uh, I know he's got everybody's support. Thank you, Jerry. Next we'll go to Dan Kilpatrick, The Standard. Morning, Morning Gareth. Morning. Uh, your boss, uh, Mark Boyling, has said he'd like to give you a new contract. Um, I wondered if you've had a, had a chance to, to think about your future yet and whether you might sign that. Uh, I don't think now's a, an appropriate time to think about anything. Uh, we've got, of course, to qualify for Qatar, um, but I need some time to go away, watch watch last night's game again, reflect on the whole tournament. Um, I, you know, I, I need a rest. Um, it's um, amazing experience, but. You know, to lead your country in these tournaments is um, takes its toll, and uh, you know I, I I need a break now. So it's um, yeah, it's I said at the time it was great to have that internal support. You 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 hugely value that as a manager, um, but also you know there's a lot a lot to think through. It's not about um, finance in any way or commitment. You know I I don't want to commit to anything longer than I should. And I never want to outstay my welcome. So, um, but so all of those things need consideration before even thinking about uh, uh, sitting down and talking. But you know, I, I, as I sit here today, I, I would want to be taking the team to Qatar. I feel that we've made progress over the the four years. Um, we've we've had a fourth place, a third place, and a second place. It's uh, probably as good as any other team in uh, in. In Europe, by those that have won the, the 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 tournaments themselves, but for consistency, it's it's right up there. So, um, a, a lot of things we've done right, and we know that this team isn't at its peak yet. Um, but that doesn't guarantee winning because we know how difficult it is to get back to the stage we got to last night. That's why it's you know so painful to get so close. 
Thanks, Dan. Next, we'll take a couple from Jessica Creighton from Sky Sports News. Uh, good morning, Gareth. Um, there were some really big tactical calls that you made throughout this tournament, and you know, almost all of them seem to have paid off. Uh, how can you reflect on what you learned as a manager yourself, and how you developed as a manager in the course of this camp? Well, um, look, I, I think you're always learning as a manager. Um, I've had the opportunity now to manage some of the biggest games in world football. So um, those games take you through a, an incredible roller coaster, and there are so many decisions to make across the four or five weeks. Um, you're never going to get them all right. And uh, we would never claim to have got them all right. And sometimes you win matches despite certain decisions and sometimes you lose matches when maybe the, they were still the right decisions to make. So um, it, it's all, all part of learning. Every, every coach, every manager is going to reflect on every game that they take charge of and um, be better for all of the experiences that you go through. So that, that process is, is never ending really. And when you reflect, and you, you, you know, you haven't had an awful lot of time to reflect so far, but do you feel there are any decisions you could have made last night to change the result? Um, yeah, I think I need to see, I need to watch the game back. It's two and a half hours, pretty much, where so much has happened that to be able to go through the timeline of all of that now is... is uh, yeah, it, 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 there's too much gone on during the game, since the game, to really be able to reflect properly. So I, I need time to do that. It's always important to watch it back and uh, to, to give a, a true account of that, I think. One of the, the big positives, I think, to come out of this tournament was the emergence of such young and exciting players. Bukayo Saka, of course, Calvin Phillips, Jaden Sancho. What do you think they will take away from this this experience and and being part of this England camp? Well, we've we've wanted for a long time to uh, make playing for England fun, make playing for England enjoyable. Um, I think our players now have that. You know, when they when they come away with England, I think they've had a fabulous experience. They've they've loved the adventure. They've loved each other's company. Um, They've got an incredible spirit. It is, you know, it really is a club type spirit. And um, the the younger ones, especially, you know, they uh, well, all the, all of this team can go again. There's no there's no doubt about that. But the young ones are still two, four years from from peaking. And uh, we've got 18, 19, 20 year olds who've who've done an incredible job and had a great insight into tournament football and um, uh, uh, and acquitted themselves so well throughout. So there are, I know, as I reflect over the coming days, there are a huge number of positives from that. And th those players will uh, will be far better for, for going through um, so many important wins, so many important landmarks that they, that they set, historic performances. In the main, they, they performed under the huge pressure of being at home for the majority of the tournament, being one of the favourites. Um, that was a far different uh, situation to the team when we went to Russia. And they dealt with that so well in the opening game, in the game with Germany, in the semi-final. For a large part of the final, certainly the first half of the final, you know, they, 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 they dealt with that. Um, and we probably had a 20 minute period where we didn't keep the ball as well as we needed to uh, just after half time. But then even the rest of the game was fairly even, although we couldn't create um, the clear chances that we've been able to in the past. And uh, part of that is because we were against a team that have gone 30 games unbeaten and some incredibly experienced players and a team that are probably just a little bit further ahead than us in their development and their progress. Thanks, Jess. Next we go to Kerry Brown, Bean Sports. Hello, Gareth. Can you hear me? We can, yeah. Yep. 
Absolutely. Um, ultimately, this is the first team to reach a final in 55 years. Um, you have to reflect and look back on that, but it seems that the camp and, and yourself are struggling to really embrace that today. Is that just a show of how great your ambitions are? Yeah, I think um, I know in time that we will you know we will have an appreciation of that and I know the messages we're all getting that are underlining that um, but when you're when you're in sport and you get to finals you know that those opportunities are so rare and to be so close and um, to know what that's taken and to know you've got to pick yourself up and go again that's that's very hard the day after you know you, you you've you've given everything and uh, the energy levels are low and the emotions are, are drained so we we will go again of course um but yeah sometimes it's easy to say things like oh you know we can go on to Qatar now and win and uh, you know it's a bit glib really it's it, that's a long journey we've still got to qualify we've still got um steps to take and uh yeah, you've got all the complexities of release of players throughout the qualifying period and everything else that you have to start that cycle again. So this has been fantastic to have the time with the players that we get, uh, to be able to work with the players every day, really embed the culture, embed our way of playing. Um, those, those periods are what, what you live for as an international manager. And of course, when it comes to the end, it's, uh, it's very difficult. Um, I, I'll take the second question as we're limited on time for everyone um, as chair of the FWA to thank yourself Gareth but also your communications team Andy who we see today Louisa Greg Anna Joe, Callum and many others you really have changed communications and how it works with broadcasters with journalists you've given us an enormous amount of time in a very pressured situation um, and we truly appreciate that and many journalists that couldn't have been at the games because of COVID as well will we'll find that hard but you have gone out of your way we hope that has helped the journey somewhat but we we do have to thank you for that and we hope that many relationships can go forward in the same way no that's very kind i'm very fortunate to lead some incredible staff and um you know you've highlighted the the uh, guys in the communications department but all of our staff are in all areas of special people and uh, that's why we've been able to create the culture we have um, you know I'm fortunate I sit at the top and um, as the leader you get all the praise but the work in the background is is phenomenal in all departments and um, it's a, a privilege to work with everybody and we, we don't have the team we have without that support if I could have one more, then it would be about your coaching staff. How important have they been in this journey? Yeah, it's um, um, it's critical. You, you know, the, the the roles are too big um, for the manager to do everything. The detail that we're able to go to, um, we've had some consistency and we've had some changes within that group and. Um, Martin Margotson has, has been with us, you know, through the last couple of campaigns and has done a brilliant job. We had Graham and Chris with us this time, which was, um, you know, added something different to the to the group. And I'm grateful for what they did. Um, but I have to highlight Steve Holland. He's a um, phenomenal coach, phenomenal man. Um, <coughs> it's the calls at, between us at 11.30 at night at times of the season when nobody's thinking about England. With you know, travelling back for matches, talking into the early hours, trying to plan things, trying to um, get things right, and um, yeah, without his support and uh, the quality of his work, there's no way we could have got to the stages we have in the last couple of tournaments. So I'm fully indebted to what he's done. Thanks, Gary. Uh, next to John Murray at BBC Five Live. Hi Gareth, um, I, I understand uh, that you need to see the match back, but I'm sure it's been going around in your head over and over again. What what is at the forefront of your mind about what you might have done differently last night? Um, well, look, I think 
we picked a team because of a tactical problem that Italy pose and areas of the pitch we needed to get pressure on them and where we thought we could hurt them. And um, I think for the first 45 minutes, everybody would agree that that worked. Um, we didn't keep the ball well enough for a 15, 20 minute period. And we know that with midfield players of the quality of Verratti, Jorginho, that is always going to be a strength with Italy. So they are going to have possession. Um, we were actually controlling the game without the ball for long periods. Um, but there were, that period we were a little bit um, more open. Um, we then couldn't release that pressure by keeping the ball, which we had done so well in the first half. We changed the shape, which I think um, gave us a little bit more um, control, but it did open up spaces elsewhere. So any tactical change, you, you have strengths um, and then there are weaknesses to any system. They, they went with a false nine for a period, which is difficult to, to deal with. If your defenders step out, they leave spaces. If they stay in, then you get overloaded a little bit in midfield. So that's always a, a really difficult problem for any team to solve. Um, and we didn't quite create the chances that we would have liked to, but you're against a team who are incredible in terms of their defensive power as a, as a team, not just the two centre-backs. So, yeah, there, there are lots of things that I will reflect on, of course. We, 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 we do that after every game and uh, um, that, that is the right process to go through. But until you watch the game in, in absolute detail, then it, it, I, would be, uh, I wouldn't be giving you a fully accurate uh, appraisal of that. Thanks, John. Next, the faker of us, a talk sport. <laughs> Hi Gareth, um, Jordan, Pickford, uh, Jordan Pickford was superb last night, his contribution obviously easy to be overlooked because of the result in the end, but he was excellent. He was, I thought he had a, a brilliant tournament, I mean there are a lot of players who come into that category and um, you don't get to a final without so many players having played well and that's what happened for us, so um, Jordan has often been you know the number of times I've sat here and his his place in the team has been questioned and uh, he's constantly delivered for us and uh, this tournament I think was was his best run of performances for England and he should be uh, hugely proud of that to concede two goals in seven matches um, you know our our whole defence our whole team but of course the goalkeeper was a big part of that two saves in the shootout. So, you know, he, he, he could do a little more in terms of keeping the ball out of our net. And um, that's always the, the, the starting point for any goalkeeper. So, yeah, he had a, a, a really outstanding tournament. Thanks, mate. Next to Henry Winter of the Times. Hi, Gareth. G Gareth, this is all very um, civilised for a post-tournament defeat. Oh, are we and are England too nice to win? Well, um, I don't see that really. Um, we've got to a final first time for 55 years. Um, yeah, I, I'm not sure. Um, not really sure what what uh, a team that gets to a final. You, you're you're not a nice team to get to a final. I think we've overcome a lot of hurdles that we've never been able to in the past. Um, we know that a lot of players that are still very inexperienced in terms of international football and uh, um, and have delivered at a, an incredibly high level. Um, the more experienced players uh, in the big matches were, were really able to use that experience to, to defeat Germany, who, who had an incredibly experienced team, uh, to come through a semi-final, which was a uh, hugely challenging uh, experience for them. And we've taken Italy, who are a top, top team and an unbeaten in 30, right to the wire. So if, if we'd 
been torn apart or, or, or you know, it looked a mess, then we m I might be thinking differently about it. But um, of course, we're going to analyse everything, but also we're, we're going to be realistic about that and not just dive into things that aren't reality and aren't the reason for, for not having won. Um, it's easy to throw theories around at the end of a, a of any game in in any number of areas, but I think it's important to really reflect carefully and uh, and analyse carefully when when you're the coach because um, I, I don't I don't want to go along with narratives that are that probably aren't correct, um, but also I have to reflect on uh, on everything that's asked, which is totally fair. <laughs> Martin Samuel, Daily Mail. Hi, Gareth. Um, Italy have now won four World Cups. I think it's the second European Championship. I know we've tried to play down history and, and everything um, throughout the tournament, the significance of it. But is there something... Um, in what happened last night about the fact it's it's 55 years, it's so long for us, and the only way you really overcome that is by getting to as many finals almost, getting to these situations as many times as countries like Italy, countries like Germany, countries like Argentina do, because they have experience of winning, they have experience of losing. It adds massively to the, the, the football culture that those players inherit. Yeah, I, I, I think you're absolutely right. It's um, I remember when we looked back at Germany's win in 2014. They'd been to semi-finals and um, you know semi-final in their own country when they hosted 2006, and the pain of that, but also the experience of that. And yeah, if you want sustained success as a team, you have to constantly be evolving, constantly improving, constantly finishing in those latter stages. And um, most teams that win, you know, France went through what we're feeling now, 2016. Germany did it, as I said. Uh, Spain went close a couple of times before they won. Um, that is normally part of the process that, you've, that you have to go through. And um, the fact that we've had, a, you know, the first signs of some consistency, semi-final, final, um, it has to be a step in the right direction. It's not ultimately where we wanted to get to, and when you're so close, that's even more painful. Of course, it's you know, it just feels like stomach's been ripped out this morning. But um, I know when my logical brain comes back to life in a few days that. That is that is the process we have to go through, and we've got to keep continuing that. Um, and England have to keep that track going. You know, wh whoever is here, wh whoever's at the FA, whoever's at St George's Park, that's what we have to build. That's that was the vision at the start, and we're showing the signs with with the help of the clubs who are who are producing some fantastic young players. Um, all of those things have to align because you know any part of that football pyramid that isn't strong um, affects the national team. And at the moment, lots of things are starting to come together, and we have to continue that. Thanks, Martin. Uh, John Cross, Mirror. Hi, Gav. Good morning. Um, I was just really going to um, ask you. Uh, uh, generally, at the end of, uh, of a tournament, uh, at the end of a uh, tournament cycle, you see the end of an era for, for a team. Um, but you're hardly really going to lose any players, are you, for 2022? You know, you've maybe got a couple of uh, over 30s. It, it, in a similar vein, I guess it feels like the beginning um, for, for this team, doesn't it? They've gained experience and this could be the beginning of the, of the journey for, for a lot of those young players. Well, I think Russia was the beginning. Um, you know, we, we had seven, I think, in the starting team last night from uh, from Russia. And that experience um, has been critical through the big matches in this tournament. So to add the young players in at the times we did, the inexperienced players in at the times we did, they've now there's another group with with more learning, more understanding of that high level. Um, they will, because of what they've been through in these two tournaments, they'll want more. They'll they'll know they can get close. They'll have belief. Um, 
and that's what we have to build on. It doesn't guarantee anything because, of course, you have to start again and you have to earn the right every time you uh, you take the field and every time you go into a tournament. But the the cycle and the expectation of the group when they come together now will be no 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 this is this is how it works this is how we train every day this is what's needed this is where we what we need to do to get to the level to win and um, that that should be a process that stands us in good stead. Thanks, John. Next to Simon Peach, Press Association. Morning, Gareth. Um, I just wanted to follow on from that, really. Um, what, what, what happened with the group? Are, are they gone now? Are they still together? Did you have one last meeting together? And what support processes are in place? I know you said last night that it's about the collective rather than any individuals, but we've discussed the, the sickening abuse aimed at some of those players. What, what support processes are there for them? Yeah, we've, we've got to make sure that we're there and aligned with their clubs and uh, making sure that we look after those boys absolutely and um, that, that's been top of my thinking um, all night really. Um, sorry, I've, I've forgotten the first part of the question, Simon. Sorry, it was just about what, what's happened in terms of the players going their separate ways. Have you, have you met up again? Or? Um, the, uh, obviously, there was a, a long period in the dressing room last night um, they then went to meet with their families um, across the road. Um, so they had, you know, I, I'm told they had a nice sort of evening together. Um, I, I managed to see them all individually for a few moments before they left the dressing room because um, I knew everybody would be sort of heading their own direction at the end of the game. And um, I just wanted to thank, thank them all for what they've given because they've been a joy to work with. They really have bought into everything we've tried to do. Um, been totally unselfish in their outlook. Um, they've all, you know, given everything they possibly could. So uh, I'm tremendously grateful for that. And I know the country is because, you know, you, you can sense from uh, from the reactions of people. So, but yeah, they they they'll all head on their way now. Um, they they. They need a break, they need a rest, and uh, uh, I hope they all have a fantastic summer. Thanks, Simon. Uh, next to Matt Dunn, The Express. Hi, Gareth. Um, we've, uh, this is so much different from the post-mortem after the last Euros, um, and like you said earlier, two semi-finals and a final now uh, makes us consistently one of the best teams in Europe. I think we've done that by um, anticipating what the opposition are doing and adapting accordingly. Uh, I just wondered, by 2022, will we be in a position more to imprint our own identity onto games? And perhaps with the young talent that we've got, see more of that attacking flair that we've got on an individual level coming through in, in our sort of open play. And is that the aim or is that going to be too soon for that? No, it, it's um, that, that has to be the aim. Um, I think some of those players are not yet at that point of of their evolution to be cemented in the team and um and I think also there were so many you know even coming into this tournament there were so many things that were uncertain in in terms of being able to embed one way of playing um the injuries we came in with the availability that we came in with um we weren't quite sure defensively what what we were going to look with um, I have to say, you know, Tyrone did a fantastic job coming into a massive situation at the beginning of the tournament. Um, we we had that huge doubt over Harry Maguire at the start, and to have defended as well as we did throughout the tournament um, without having been able to play that back four together too often, really, in the in the two years before Luke only came back in with us in March for for one game. He had a phenomenal tournament, I have to say, as well. So we we were constantly dealing with uncertainties. We didn't know, you know, Calvin Phillips, amazing tournament. We we weren't sure we were going to have him in the the, the week leading into the first camp. Um, so remarkable year, really, in in terms of trying to build something consistent. We never had the players um, all together until seven days before the start of of the tournament itself, and. You'd you'd like to have built across the whole season, but 
that wasn't the realities of the season we had. Um, that should be the aim moving forward. Um, in some areas of the team, we've got clear strength and uh, players who were in form. And um, in other areas of the team, we don't have quite the same amount of strength and we've had to do it differently and do it our way. And by adapting and adjusting, we've, we've managed to get to a final. So, of course, you're always looking for perfection and we're always looking to improve and we must continue to do that. Thanks, Matt. OK, we're coming to the end now, so we've got time for a couple more, um, starting with Rob Harris from AP. Hi, Gareth. Commiserations. Thanks for everything for your tournament. Um, does it frustrate you and are you reflecting on how to tackle how you've got players who've generated such pride from the country during these last few weeks, but you're still having to deal and address the fact there are fans who are being disrespectful, offensive and violent and, and not the image that you want and certainly completely counter to the image that the, the players have presented? Yeah, look, I mean, we can't control that. Um, we can only set the example that we believe we should and uh, represent the country in the way that we feel um, you should when you're representing England. And everybody has to remember when they support the team that they all also represent England and uh, should represent what we stand for. So um, I think the, the players have done that brilliantly. and. Um, we, we can only continue to try to affect the things that we can, but we have, I think, had a positive effect on lots of areas of society, but, but we can't affect everything. There, other people have responsibilities in those areas and, uh, um, you know, we, we've all got to work collectively to, to constantly improve those things. Thanks, Rob. And we'll finish with a question from Ollie Foster at the BBC. Hi there, Gareth. Hi, Gareth. Hi, Gareth. Apologies. Apologies. Um, just as those players are, are really hurting at the moment, especially the three that, that missed the penalties, you say you take the sort of collective responsibility and the responsibility as well. How much does it hurt you that you perhaps didn't get things right about, you talk about failing to solve those problems that Roberto Mancini set, set you? Yeah, look, uh, um, as a manager, uh, you have to accept whenever there's a defeat, there's going to be um, intense analysis of everything that happened in the game. And um, I, we've benefited from a lot of um, praise during the tournament. And if we didn't get that right last night, if I didn't get that right last night, then um, I have to accept that as well. So I think some of that analysis could be accurate and I, and I expect some of it won't be. Um, but, uh, you know, I need time to, to reflect on all of that. Um, it's, uh, yeah, you, you make hundreds of decisions in the course of a week, in the course of a tournament, there are even more. And um, you're not going to get all of those right. You, you, you call them as you see them at the time. And um, you've got to get more right than wrong. And uh, if, if we didn't, if I didn't get the calls right last night, then uh, then so be it. I have to live with that. Sorry to disappoint the many hands raised. We're going to conclude it there. And I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you all for your coverage across the course of this tournament. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.